The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Okay, our next speaker is Dr. Siamak Sotar. He's with the, uh, with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and he's going to give us an overview of an AATC project that uh, was intended to benchmark uh, methodologies for seismic evaluation of existing systems, buildings. Dr. Sotar? Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, today, I will give you an overview of an ongoing NIST ATC project on benchmarking of evaluation methods for existing buildings. Um, I start with the motivation of this project. Um, currently, uh, there are multiple evaluation methods for reinforced concrete structures, including ASC 41, ATC 78, Eurocode, and New Zealand guidelines. However, uh, there have been no systematic study uh, that compares the performance estimated by these evaluation procedures with the actual damage observed in the field. In other words, uh, we use all of these evaluation methods every day, but uh, we don't know exactly how well these methods can predict the damage. So the objective of this project is to benchmark these evaluation procedures uh, for various guidelines and standards against field or lab observations, and uh, finally develop a set of recommendations for future editions of ASCE 41. Um, this is a big team effort. Um, we have a, um, a, tech, a project technical committee uh, of researchers and practicing engineers, and they are the ones who uh, do the hard work and run the analysis. Um, some of them are here today. Uh, this project is, NIST, uh, is funded by NIST, and uh, uh, our contracted ATC is uh, executing the project. We have a review committee who uh, periodically review the progress of the project and provide feedback. Um, with this uh, brief introduction, uh, next I will talk about the research method that was adopted for this project. Um, in order to benchmark the, uh, the, uh, these evaluation methods, we need a set of buildings. Uh, so we, selected a set of, we need to select a set of buildings and collect the information, including the uh, detailing of these buildings, earthquake records, soil information, etc. Um, after that, we need to evaluate the response of these buildings using different evaluation methods, including 41, ATC 78, et cetera. After we evaluated these buildings, we will compare the evaluation results uh, with the observed uh, damage. This comparison will uh, basically identify the strength and weaknesses of each of these evaluation methods and will lead to developing a set of recommendations for 41. Um, in order to develop these recommendations, uh, we need to go to the next level and uh, we may need to improve our numerical models. We may need to do sensitivity analysis or run multi-stripe analysis, but these are all um, future tasks in the project. So I will, talk about, I will start with the uh, building selection, which is the first step. Uh, at the beginning of the project, uh, we developed a set of criteria for selecting the buildings. We wanted to study at least six reinforced concrete structures, a mix of uh, shear wall buildings and moment frame buildings. Um, uh, we wanted to make sure that at least two of these buildings are uh, pre-1980 uh, 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 buildings to, uh, that represent older uh, construction and design, and at least uh, two of the buildings are from U.S., and the rest uh, should be similar to the common uh, construction and design in U.S. Um, another selection criteria uh, was uh, the availability of detailed building information, uh, including the drawings, as well as the availability of the uh, uh, post-event reconnaissance data. Uh, and the last but not least was the availability uh, of the ground motion record in the uh, close proximity to the building. As uh, we know, um, ground motion record has uh, one of the biggest sources of uncertainty when we run dynamic analysis. And in order to minimize the impact of this source of uncertainty, we basically um, develop the last criterion. 
So considering these criteria, we selected uh, seven buildings that are listed here. In next few slides, I will provide you more information about each uh, building. The first uh, building selected was a 2D frame tested in uh, Berkeley um, sh on a shake table. Um, shake table tests provide uh, a unique opportunity for us to uh, benchmark these evaluation methods because when we deal with a shake table test, we know all the detailing information, uh, including material properties, the uh, ground motion that was used, um, and uh, there is no non-structural components. So if the evaluation methods uh, prediction for the damage is very off with what we observe on a shake table test, uh, uh, probably that uh, may raise a red flag for evaluation methods. This specific frame was a three-story moment frame. Half of the columns are ductile, half are non-ductile. Uh, the frame was tested under unidirectional shaking, and uh, the damage reported including, uh, uh, included the column and beam hinging, and finally shear and axial failure of uh, columns, non-ductile columns in the first story. The second building uh, was another shake table test, E-Defense shake table test, four-story full-scale reinforced concrete frame uh, in one direction and shear wall building in other direction. Um, sorry, shear wall in other direction. This building was tested under multi-directional loading. Um, and the damage observed was, again, included the column and beam hinging, um, severe joint shear failure, and severe failure in the boundary element of walls as well as the sliding of the walls at the bottom of the walls. Next was Imperial County Service Building, six-story building, frame in one direction and wall frame in the other direction. This building was damaged uh, in 1979 Imperial Valley earthquake, um, and this building included a set of irregularities including, uh, including the weak and soft story and wall discontinuity and also torsional sensitivity. Uh, the primary structural damage observed was the biaxially driven uh, column failure on the east end of the building. Next is the famous Holiday Inn Van Nuys building, seven-story building, perimeter spandrel beam column frame, and interior slab column frame. Uh, the 1994 Northridge earthquake uh, caused shear failure in multiple columns in the fourth and fifth story of this building. Next uh, is Pine Gold Building, a uh, five-story building in Christchurch, New Zealand, reinforced concrete wall building with uh, gravity reinforced concrete frame. This building collapsed during the earthquake. <coughs> Um, next is the Nanhua District Office Building in Taiwan. This is a three-story building, one-way slab beam column moment frame. This building has a full height and partial height infill walls, and uh, the uh, reconnaissance report uh, showed the diagonal cracking of the infill walls as well as the concrete column uh, in the first story. And the last building is Zingfu District Office Building in Taiwan. Uh, this is a newer building built in 2000, seven-story building, uh, slab beam column moment frame. Uh, this building uh, has uh, full height RC walls and partial height infill walls. And uh, the damage that, report, that was reported was partial collapse <clears throat> of the building. So if you have uh, noticed, um, you may see that uh, this building set that we selected actually provide a good test bed for benchmarking the evaluation methods because they include a different structural system as well as different extent of damage uh, from shear failure in a, in a couple of columns all the way to partial and full collapse of the building. After we selected the buildings, the next step was the evaluating the response of each of these buildings. So we develop linear and nonlinear models uh, for each building. Uh, we closely followed ASC 4117 modeling recommendations. And wherever 41 uh, was not explicit, we adjusted the models based on judgment. Um, uh, we used uh, long plasticity and fiber modeling approach to develop the nonlinear models. Currently, the analysis, most of the analysis are underway, and we expect the analysis to be completed by the end of this year. After the analysis are done, uh, the next step would be basically linking the analysis result to the field observation. That may sound straightforward, but actually it's um, a little bit challenging because the analysis results usually give us the uh, deformation in the component or interstory drift. However, the observed damage is usually reported uh, with pictures or in written format. 
So in order to overcome this challenge, if a few approaches uh, were developed by the team, and today I will show you one of the approaches that we will investigate. So in this approach, we extract the deformation in the component level, um, and then we create a database of uh, pictures that shows the extent and type of failure for each component as the function of uh, the component configuration uh, and characteristics as well as the deformation demand. Um, so, for instance, if you know your column uh, axial load ratio and material properties and uh, ductility, um, this database can tell you what would be the expected damage at 2% refresh. Uh, using this database and the extracted uh, deformation in the component level, we can uh, estimate the damage for each component and then we can compare the estimated damage from the analysis results with the actual damage observed in the field. So this comparison will tell us how far or how we close we are uh, with the actual damage. So far, what I've discussed is all at the component level because ASC 41 evaluation method is a component level approach. So in this, uh, in this method, basically, if one component fails, you need to retrofit the component. Um, although the component level uh, response is important to uh, understand the response of the building, but it doesn't tell you the whole story about the global performance of the building. Um, so in this project, we thought that it would be helpful to go to the system level performance. Um, and one of the ways to look at the system level performance is to look at the fragility curves uh, for these buildings. Um, so here we have two goals. One goal, the first goal is to basically um, compute the probability of collapse for each building, uh, if possible, at the MCR uh, uh, hazard and compare that against the target performance of ASC 7, which is 10% probability of collapse for these buildings. So for instance, if um, for one of the buildings, the probability of collapse is about 10% and an evaluation method tell us that half of the columns uh, will fail collapse prevention acceptance criteria. There's a, there is an issue somewhere that needs to be um, fixed. The second goal uh, of developing fragility curves is uh, linking the component level response to the system level response. So here the idea is uh, developing multiple fragility curves for different uh, percentage of components in the building that fail collapse prevention acceptance, acceptance criteria. Uh, so for instance, we can develop a, a set of fragility curves that show uh, the probability that one component or 10% of component or 50% of components uh, fail collapse prevention acceptance criteria and overlay that on top of the global collapse fragility curves that we can get from um, incremental dynamic analysis, let's say, and uh, develop a figure like what I show here in this slide. Um, so what we can do uh, by this figure is that we can see how far the, the results from the component level approach is or are from the results from the global performance level approach. And this may identify the need for improving the component level approach uh, that we currently have in ASC 41. So as a summary, um, the, the results of this study will help us uh, improve the understanding of the expected accuracy of the current evaluation methods and will also help us to develop a set of recommendations for future editions of ASC 41. Um, the project is expected to be completed by the end of 2019 and we are planning to extend the scope of the project and uh, investigate uh, two more buildings that were damaged during the 2017 Central uh, Mexico earthquake. In the next talk, uh, Professor Lowe's will uh, uh, talk about one of the buildings that was uh, studied in the, that is being studied in this project, and will provide you with more details on the results. Thank you for listening to my presentation.